Now, she's known as Umam Kize following a reality show on a local TV channel. Sean Kize is a Durban-based businesswoman who recently bought the Royal AM Football Club. And she joins us now in studio for a conversation. Mum Kize, good morning. Good morning to you, darling. How are well, you? Well, thank you. You dressed up for us to the nines, looking <laughs> ravishing. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you for having me, actually. Yeah. I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. Yes, I get it. <laughs> we wanted to get to know you a bit better. Where did your journey into entrepreneurship and being a businesswoman actually begin? I think it began when I was pregnant with my son. Um, some were thinking it's just the pregnancy, but I felt like I was tired counting other people's money. Yeah. I wanted to count my money. <laughs> that, that's how you felt. You, you wanted to... Be your own boss, be your own, you know, manager and manage your own time and your finances. You know, the problem is I was working as a bookkeeper. Mm. So as a bookkeeper, you count these big monies for other people and you feel like, hey, maybe let me start counting my money. Why must I keep on counting other people's money and keeping them into shape and telling them how to manage their money? Let me try and see if I can't do it for myself. Yeah. Yeah. And you've I come think. this far. Not only are you doing that, you're an inspiration to so many people, but I'm sure it wasn't easy. Any trials and tribulations that you want to also warn some entrepreneurs out there about? You know, I want to tell you something. Every downfall in life, it's, don't take it as a downfall. Just take it as um, it's something that allows you an opportunity to scrutinize and to do a selection. Mm. Because as you climb the heights, you need to know who are the people that deserve to be in your seat. Because sometimes you'll think that the downfall is there for nothing. Everything that happens in your life, it happens for a reason. Yeah. And truth be told, whatever that you go through, it's either it's for the selection, it's a selection process, because you need to know who are for you, that you need to take them as you climb and as you escalate those heights right. and take them with you. You make it look so easy, though. <laughs> Sometimes when I see you, how you deal with challenges, how you react, how you respond to challenges or confrontation, you make the rest of us feel like, why am I putting a magnifying glass on this issue <laughs> and not just you know, smiling my way through? How do you do it also just in terms of your mantra in life? I think I have no fear. I have no fear mentally, I have no fear psychologically, and I take things as they come because I don't live for people, I live for myself. Mm. And if I see an opportunity, I go for it. And, you know, I think when you go for something like that, even when you go down, you say, let me go to it and make sure that I conquer it. Right. So you confronted, you don't even run away from it. So if there's a, a, a flight uh, or fight, you choose the fight to actually deal with it head on. Let's talk about the new transition and not necessarily transition, but you, you have a construction company. We also know you as, you know, being uh, in that space, but now into football. W was it a difficult sort of move to make and how has that experience been compared to your previous business experience? Um. You know, in construction, I've done my 20 years and I think my time has come there. I always like something that is challenging. And um, in football, I came by default, by the way. Mm. Yeah, uh, it's my son who loves football. Yeah. And uh, knowing me, you know how I support my kids. So my son has been so passionate about soccer mm. from his childhood. And uh, so I went into this football thing by, devo by default. And when I went into this thing, this thing is addictive, man. <laughs> How is it addictive? <laughs> it's so addictive. You know, you, you sit in that 90 minutes, that adrenaline of that 90 minutes. Yeah. Boy, oh boy. Right. You don't come out. You forget about everything that happens in the world. It's just that 90 minutes of adrenaline. And it's so fulfilling and very nice, by yeah. the way. No, yeah. I can tell you enjoy because even some of your supporters say you've brought the fun again uh, into football. But because it is also the International Day of the Girl Child, and I was talking to the UNFP about some of the work they're doing uh, to help girls, what do you think about women in football? What has been your observation when it comes to the role and the presence of more women in football? You know, I want to tell you something. Let's start here. If you look at Bafana Bafana and look at ba Banyana Banyana, mm. Banyana Banyana is doing so well, guys. But you know what we're doing when Bafana Bafana back in the days where there was a, a World Cup in, 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 in South Africa? 
We were so illuminating. This, they, they, there was so much of fun. Right. And look at Banyanya Banyana. They are doing so well. But the hype that we've created for Bafana Bafana, it's not the same like the hype that we are creating for Banyana Banyana. Mm, mm. So there's always, yes, we might be liberated as the country, but we're still not doing as well as we can yeah. uh, in, in supporting women that are in football. Look at uh, 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 our football here in South Africa for women. Mm -hmm. Do you know about it? A bit about as, it. As, as, as much as you will know about no, no, it's the, not the, the as men's in soccer. My face, yeah. you, you see what I'm saying? There, there's also a woman's, there's not um, the hype that is created for the men's football and the women's football mm. is different. So you'll understand as well. You know, when I play with some of the teams and they get beaten by me, they don't say they're beaten by Royal AM. They'll be like, Hey, Lumfaz, why is it so mm. Lumfaz? You, you understand? And mm. it's, 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 it's there. It's the stigma that we still have to go a long way understanding that or, or, or leaving what we're preaching, saying that we are all equal. Yeah. And what would you like to see happen? Because um, that conversation also transcends into finances, saying that even the women that are in football, even sports overall, are not paid the same as their male counterparts. We still see women being underpaid. What would you like to see happen? And what, what role do you think you can play there? I think as women, we need to go out there and we need to stand up for what we think is right. The worst part of it is that we have to put an extra energy and work triple harder as men for us to be recognized. But let's break those boundaries. Mm. Those boundaries are there for us to break them. If we don't stand up and break them, if we always think that we, men are always better than us, we need men to conquer the world, then we are not going to break those boundaries. Yeah. Let's stand up and say, Women power. Absolutely. I couldn't have said <laughs> on a better day, which is International uh, Day of the Girl Child. I, I want to also talk about your uh, uh, sort of like your, your dibble and dabbling into reality TV. We got a taste of Umam Keys. Are we seeing her back? And how was that experience like out of the many things that you have done and experienced? Let me tell you something. I know, uh, uh, you know, everything that I venture into, it always, you know, when I went into reality TV, I wanted to gain my sinning back. Mm. I wanted to become, I wanted to gain my identity because I felt like my identity was lost. Indeed, I found my identity, but in the process when I was trying to find my identity, I know I've inspired a lot of people. And now I was stuck with this thing to say, okay, season two, and everybody wanted season two. Right. And for me, my purpose was served. I found my identity, I found myself, and people were able to relate to me as Ushon Mamkiz. Right not as something else, but mm. as, as me. And uh, now I found my niche, I found my identity. I'm no longer there. But that's why I've created the Instagram so that people that felt like they were so much inspired by Umam Kize, they can still go onto Instagram page and find the inspiration there. Because I still give those inspirations. Did you think it was because before the reality TV show, maybe you didn't own your story, you didn't own your narrative? You know, people can say whatever, and you didn't have a platform uh, to show your real self, your true self, your authentic self. Um, so you wanted to take that power back and own your own narrative. To tell you the honest truth, um, sometimes perception becomes a reality. And I think I was boom, zoom into the space of, of, of the social media. And the perception that was created by the media, it became a reality. Mm, and mm. for me to say, this is me, and this is who I am. And if you look at the perception that was created before, some of it, I still deal with it now and again. Before I used to be called a controversial businesswoman. Right. But now I'm properly a businesswoman because people, they understand what I, what I do. But the perception that was created before, it has changed me and made me to become somebody that I'm not. So for me, I think the platform that I've created, the Instagram mm. that I've created, it's the platform that allows people to interact and understand who Ushon Mkize is yeah. and what I'm made of. And, and I think people having direct access to you and not having to speak to you through the media also has allowed them to feel that you are relatable. You're relatable because they can then just DM you or send you a comment and, and you may reply. reply. Um, we're heading to elections and I have to ask you this because I know that you're coming uh, from a family that has been involved in uh, politics. What's the importance um, of voting at this time? We've heard so many South Africans, uh, you know, Mamkis are saying that they do not want to vote. They're withholding their vote because they're frustrated with the lack 
of service delivery within their communities. And that's their way of defying and saying we are actually frustrated. Uh, what's your view around making sure that people do, you know, vote so that they can, of course, uh, you know, gain their municipalities back? Darling. I am not a politician. I chose not to be a politician, to be a business people, mm. to be a business person. Mm. But I know how important it is to vote. Because if we don't vote, then our voice will never be raised. If I look at me, I think I'm part of liberation. And if people that are coming now and they don't want to see the part of liberation, if we don't vote, then we are not going to enjoy the benefits of the liberation. We're going to go back there. It is very imperative for everybody else to go out there and vote so that they'll be able to make their voice heard. Yeah. Mm. Because if you stand still and you don't vote, then other people will vote. And you'll never know what will happen. Mm. So it's imperative to go and, if you feel strongly about something, go there and vote so that your voice will be heard. Yeah, and I suppose, I mean, that the hard blood, sweat and tears uh, <laughs> that are seen South Africa have that privilege and that democracy and, you know, that right to even vote should not be taken for granted. That's the message I'm getting from you. But I can't let you go without also speaking about COVID-19. As an entrepreneur, wanting to know the impact it has had um, on you as a businesswoman, on you as a mother having to educate yourself, your kids, your family around protecting uh, each other, especially when we've seen so many loved ones losing their loved ones. How has this pandemic been like for you? For me, it's been a difficult one. You know, most of the people, you know, you'll phone a person that you know and they will say, oh no, he has passed away. We have lost so many lives, we have lost so many people and uh, so many people have lost their jobs. Mm. So mm. many people mm. have lost their business. It's something that the country was never ready for and it has hit the country very hard. Yeah. But at the very same token, we need to be very mindful. When this the whole thing started, you will see I was updating people and telling them about this, the, the, the stat. And I'm still saying now, it is important that you go and vaccinate. Because I believe from what we've been told about vaccination, it stops, I, I don't know, it doesn't stop you from getting COVID. No. But it, it, it helps you not to die mm. When, mm. When, when you've got COVID. I think it's controllable. So people must vaccinate. It will allow us to go back to the normal ways of having our country back to it and having our economy back to us. Because, yes, as much as COVID, it's still there, but it's difficult. There are some, like, look at the entertainment people. The right. entertainment people, they've lost their jobs because their life is within the crowd of people. So if people get vaccinated, and I'll get to see the supporters on the stadium. I'm the only supporter on the stadium who's <laughs> eliminating for my boys. It's so nice to see the supporters yeah. back at the stadium again. And I'm sure that's what you would like to see, to see more fans coming up and supporting of Royal course, Air, right? Of course, And you know what? I know this is not the platform to do this. People, there's somebody who has been using my Instagram or whatever, Facebook, I don't know where they've been using it, mm. and saying there's an investment. Guys, I don't do... I don't do forex, I don't do investment, and people must know that is a scam. I don't know how many people they have been robbed with that scam, and I've been putting on my page. So oh, no. people, they must understand, I don't have Facebook or, okay. or investment account in anywhere else. So. Now that I'm sitting here, I'm sorry to, to abuse no, your you platform. You have to because scams are, are big right now. Scams are big, whether it's bank scams, whether it's cyber scams, whether it's you know social media scams. It's important to make sure that we uh, you know send the right messaging and not fake news. But I'm also going to let you go in a few uh, moments. Before I do, um, you move from construction to Royal AM. What's next for Mom Keys? What else do we expect? Anything that you would like to let the country know about? The sky is the limit with me. And uh, I always go for something that is very challenging. All what I can tell the country, or all what I can tell people that follow me, is that more things is coming. And I'm still gonna surprise the country because I always surprise the country, and that's me. <laughs> I like the sound of that. Sean Kiza, thank you so much for your time. Thank you uh, for, for coming me. into studio <laughs> and for joining us. That's, of course, Sean Kiza, Mum Kiza, uh, joining us right here on the South African Morning. I have to say, I really enjoyed. What was left was just, you know, I don't know, coffee and tea and croissants. Sorry for being bad host. We're supposed to at least uh, bring something for Umam Kiza. But taking her time out to share with us, of course, her plans for the future, but also how she's been coping with COVID-19 and um, also her enjoying Royal AM and being the owner of the football club. All right.